In the workshop, how to repair a broken Proxon rechargeable Micromot electric drill. I generally sing the praises of these Proxon products and this is no exception. The only reason that it's broken is that I badly overheated it. In the last job that I did using this drill, I put far too much pressure on it and didn't let it cool. And to be fair, it's not exactly broken, it still works okay but it won't turn off. Unlike the wired type of Proxon drills, which have a separate on-off switch, this one doesn't. It's built into the small knob on the back, like a click on and off potentiometer, except that now this one doesn't click off, so the drill runs all the time. And what's happened is part of the switch appears to be not working. And this has to be something to do with the amount of excessive heat caused by my incompetence. In this video, I'm going to dismantle the drill and show how to fix it. First thing to do is to find the correct type of screwdriver. This is a rare look inside my box of small screwdrivers. The type of screwdriver I need is one of these, I think they're called torque screwdrivers. Not to be confused with Phillips type screwdrivers or the posi drive type of screwdriver. Luckily I found just the right one in my box of screwdrivers and now I can remove the four bolts that hold the unit together. This drill is basically in three parts, the back bit that holds the battery, the middle bit that you hold and this front bit that holds the chuck. I've never looked inside one of these motor tools before and so far I'm very impressed at what I see. The first thing I really need to do is remove the knob from the speed controller. This knob is held onto a squared metal shaft and once I remove the retaining bolt it just pulls off. Nothing difficult here. Well maybe apart from this bit, I could not get the speed controller out of the housing because the potentiometer shaft was a bit too long. But once common sense prevailed and I squeezed the housing at each side, it came loose quite easily. The next job is to remove the motor which is held in with some quite large screws. I had to use a much larger screwdriver to successfully remove these without chewing them up. They were also quite tight because they must have had some thread locker on them when the drill was assembled at the factory. Here's the story so far, the drill is coming apart quite nicely and I haven't destroyed anything in the process. The motor is very good, it's quite a heavy duty version of an RS550 motor and when you rotate it it feels very notchy which means it's going to be powerful. This is the front part and the bearings are in excellent condition. Even though this drill is only a couple of years old it has had a lot of use. When I bought this drill it was fitted with a collet chuck and I changed it for a drill chuck and I took this part off. And oddly enough, or should I say unsurprisingly, that's why the shaft went in and out, because this is the bearing retainer, along with the spring washer. After refitting the retainer and washer, it's fine. When I turn this part round, I see what looks like a gear. The drill doesn't have a gearbox. This gear mates with the one on the motor, which probably explains why the drill runs so quietly. It's time to unsolder the motor, first the red wire, then the black wire. And next, I lever off these connectors. And once that's done, I can withdraw the speed controller. This is the reverse side, although it is a double-sided board. I'm just looking how the potentiometer is mounted. And speaking of potentiometers, here is the offending item. This is my old soldering iron, and this is fairly offensive too. I really need to buy at least a new tip for it. Here, I'm using a special tool to remove the solder. You press a plunger into the tube and press a button to release it, which literally sucks the solder off the joint. Once all the solder is removed, there's nothing holding the potentiometer in position, so you can just lift it off the circuit board. When you're doing jobs like this, do not apply too much heat to the circuit board, otherwise you will remove the copper track from the circuit board too. This is a standard variable resistor with an on-off switch. At the back of it, a cam on the central shaft opens and closes a spring-loaded contact. But owing to this part getting hot, I assume, the plastic bit that separates the contacts is loose on the shaft. Should I contact Proxon for a spare part? No, I think that's too much trouble. Should I fit a separate switch? Well, yes, I could do that. Or maybe I should try and fix this one. It's really not important because I bought a new one of these drills. And hopefully that should arrive from RDG Tools next week. This potentiometer, as you can see, is very small. I need a magnifying glass to see it. The camera sees it okay, though. Here are the bits of the drill on the bench, and this is how I fixed it. One bottle of medium viscosity super glue and a piece of welding wire. The welding wire allowed me to pick up a very small quantity of super glue and apply it to the joint. Once the super glue had set, 
I tested the potentiometer by hand and I could see that it was opening and closing the contact. The next job was to resolder the potentiometer onto the speed controller board and after reconnecting and refitting the board into its housing, I resoldered the wires onto the motor. Really, I should have cleaned up the parts with my solder sucker and put the wires through the holes, but instead I just soldered them onto the tags. I made sure it was a good quality solder joint and it should work fine. In this clip, I'm re-tightening the bolts that hold the motor in place, but I made a mistake. I got the sequence wrong. If you look on the bench, on the red part of the bench at the back, you see a white plastic thing, and this has to go around the motor first, so I undid the motor and refitted it. In this clip, I'm replacing all of the long bolts using the special torque screwdriver. Time to replace the battery and see if it works. I'd better explain, the noise you can hear when the drill stops is my dehumidifier that I use in winter in the workshop. So it was quite a lot of effort, but all it needed in the end was a bit of super glue and a piece of welding wire to place the super glue where I wanted it. And just to make sure that it's not a temporary fix, I thought it would simulate use. So I'm actually doing quite a lot of knob twiddling here. And what will I do if it stops working? Well, I will throw it through the window. Because, as I've already mentioned, there is a new one arriving next week. I started to film the final shots and then I realised that I put the front bit on the wrong way round. All I had to do was untighten the four long bolts, rotate the front part into the correct position and re-tighten the bolts. And that's it. How to repair the potentiometer on a Proxon Micromot rechargeable motor tool. Flush with success, I dismantled the old video camera which had also malfunctioned on the same day. Then I decided to phone a Sony repair centre and the young lady dealing with the query took my email address and said she would send me details of how to return it. No such email was forthcoming so I took it apart, found out what the problem was and it was going to be too expensive anyway. So I've totally dismantled the old camera, bought a new one and at least I have some spares if the new camera that I bought, which is the identical model, ever goes wrong. At least my Proxon drill works again. And that's it. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.